I think ITV by a very long way. Uh, they've got the better experts, certainly. And I think overall, their coverage has been better. I think the problem with the BBC coverage has been that after the criticisms they had with the World Cup, they've had their studio in their um, um, center in Salford in Manchester, and that sticks out like a bit of a sore thumb. But you asked me a question, I'd probably say BBC. I like Lineker, I don't mind him. I thought, you know, when he first started, uh, a lot of people would give him a stick. I thought, no, he's not that bad, but I think Gary's now accomplished. It's quite a neat battle between Roy Keane and uh, Gareth Southgate, with probably Roy Keane just having that little bit of edge. Um, he's always very forthright and he hasn't uh, been afraid to say what he thinks. I'm afraid um, Alan Shearer, a great goal scorer that he is, has never very impressed me as a commentator. And at the moment, seeing him on the uh, sidelines there, he doesn't seem to add very much apart from the fact that he's wearing a shirt that doesn't seem to be tucked in. But uh, that may be, you know, my misreading of the situation. I'm a big Alan Hansen fan. I know he's not everyone's favourite, but I do believe he played with great players, played against great players, and I think he tells you it's straight. He may have a bias to Liverpool, but then I think we've all got bias to our clubs. You know, I love talking about Ipswich if we're doing well. Uh, we just haven't done well for years, so I don't talk about them. Well, on the Rio Ferdinand issue, I think the FA gave Roy Hodgson a hospital pass. Um, the moment um, the John Terry incident happened and he was charged when they uh, dropped him from the captaincy, they should have also sorted out whether he should be playing. Now, in a situation outside of football, in any work situation, um, a person would be suspended on full pay without any admission of guilt till the whole matter is resolved. And really, they, sh they should have told the manager, sorry, John Terry shouldn't have been picked. There is a problem, of course there's a problem with the racial thing. We'll see what happens with that with Rio's brother. That had something to do with it, definitely. In terms of footballing uh, decisions, it was a football decision. I've said before it wasn't. But what I meant by that was, this was no doubt about harmony within the club, within the dressing room, the England club I'm talking about, within the dressing room. And, and it would have been a problem if Terry and Rio had been there together. I'm not taking sides. Uh, I think it was, um, was it uh, Sol Campbell who said, if John was picked because he's black and white, if he's, he's picked because he's white, sorry, you're out of order, Sol. Bang out of order. That is wrong. There could be an issue, and could be, because we'll find out in court, what happened on that day in the football game, what was said. But Roy couldn't take that chance. You can't do it. It's a close-knit squad for a big, the second biggest tournament in the world. And he had to decide, was it Terry, was it Ferdinand? And the footballing decision was, I need my camp happy, I need my squad happy. And John Terry's proved this year he plays more than Rio, and that's why I think he was in the squad. I've been impressed with Denmark. Denmark always in the East Championships, and that's a long time ago, um, somehow play better than you expect them to. And really their, their victory against a Dutch team, which fancies itself winning the Euros um, was, I think, quite an eye-opener. And the other team that has pleasantly surprised me has been Greece. I saw Greece win the 2004 Euros with the long ball, a sort of slightly higher version of what Wimbledon used to play. And it was nice to see them play ball to feet and not just in the air. And uh, I thought their performance against Poland was um, um, quite a pleasant one and a pleasantly surprising one. I think Italy could surprise a lot. A lot of people were talking about the scandal, the match, the alleged match fixings, and the Italian squad might you know, split up, they might come home, they might not last, rubbish. All big major events, the Italians, they, they normally start slow, and it wasn't a slow start. They give Spain a flipping good game, don't worry about that. Um, Italy, one of the dark horses, could go a long way. Portugal, you know, they lost, I thought they were unlucky. I like them. And what about Russia? There's a lot of money going into Russian football at the moment. I mean, a lot. Some big stars are going over there to play because of money, but that has definitely increased how good the Russian football is. They're playing with an open mind, they're playing with freedom. Russia could be dark horses to make a semi-final. 
Well, it'd be nice to think that England could win Euro 2012, but I think that is unlikely. I, I think one, the choice is between um, Spain and Germany, and at the moment, I would just say Germany would edge it in the final. Who's going to win it? Everyone asks me. Uh, Spain really surprised me and disappointed me with no striker. Packed in midfield, no striker. Craig Levine tried that with Scotland once and got absolute pelters. Spain are a little bit different to Scotland, of course, uh, apart from the weather. But they, they have got some great, great players. Uh, wonderful football inside, reigning European and world champions. Only they could probably get away with not playing a striker in a massive tournament like this. I think they will have to change it. Torres come on, had two good chances. Could have, could have won the game for them, had he been a little bit sharper. But the way they knock the ball about, the way they control the game, the one-twos, the running, I think Spain are still the side to beat. The Germans have got a big, big chance to do. They didn't play great, but Gomez, and I'll come on to him in a moment, didn't get a lot of the ball, got half a chance, great header, took the chance, got the points. So they're a very good side. Uh, who else would be in there? France. France. France look good. Unbeaten in 22 now. They could make a semi-final. It really is tight. The Dutch were disappointing. Van Persie was disappointing. I hope he can come back. But nailing my colours to the mast, it's going to be another. The first time back-to-back -back victories, back-to-back -back champions, Spain will win it. The Golden Boot. Um, well, that's a, a difficult one. Before the tournament began, I thought um, um, Ronaldo might do it. I still think he could do it, though he didn't score in the opener. And of course, the golden boot often goes to a player um, not from the team that has won the um, championship. So I think I'll, I'll say um, Ronaldo would win the golden boot. A golden boot's an interesting one, really is. Um, will it be someone who can get three or four goals? I think the best at the moment is two. Uh, I was hoping Torres would get his confidence. I thought it was coming back at the end of his uh, Chelsea season, but the manager's left him out. He may still play a big part. Gomez, I mentioned earlier, uh, took his chance well. Missed a hatful against Chelsea, didn't he? In the Champions League, couldn't hit a barn door. Um, I think as long as the German manager stays with Gomez, um, instead of closer, because closer will be kicking the door down and saying, give me a chance, boss, give me a chance. If he sticks with Gomez, I think Gomez will probably be just about the top scorer. So if I have a little five pound bet or a five euro bet, Gomez. Well, this is the nature of modern football, that club loyalty means so much. There's so much money in club football. And of course, the club season takes so much out of the player that playing for the country has declined. Rude Hullet told me last week that playing for your country, winning for your country, um, uh, is the most important thing. He's won the Champions League with Milan, won the Euros, led Holland to their Euros in 1988, and believed that was his greatest moment in his footballing life. But I'm not sure many of the players think that way. They, they take a sort of slightly mercenary view. Uh, you know, much more important for me to play at club level, earn the money and retire, and the country thing has declined. And also this, is, this has happened because club football, particularly the Premiership and certain other leagues, actually provides you an international feast of the kind that when we were young, the only opportunity for that was the, was the World Cup. Now you can see it almost every evening of the week or every day of the week um, uh, at one of your national leagues. So I think players have become, I, if you like, inured to the idea of competition, international competition. And while it's wonderful to say that you should play for your country, I can understand a player beset by doubt, worried how long he will play, is trying to make as much money as possible and uh, make sure of his future. It's a difficult one. And I think it all comes down to if you're a top international player and you're a top player in the Premiership, I think now when you were an international player, you used to enhance your contracts with Premiership clubs. The Premiership now is so big. The, you know, the Spanish League is so big now. The money's there, the glory's there. And I think players now are multi-millionaires. 
international football, if they'd be honest with you, some love and die for it. Rooney loves it. Give me that England top. Others can take or leave it. I think it's what we do with money, fame and glory. And some of them are happy with fame and glory for the clubs rather than the country. I think the squad of 92 um, was much worse than that, man for man. I think this is an ageing squad. I think the problem has been, of course, the departure of the manager and the fact that a new manager has come in. I think the fact that the one charismatic player, Wayne Rooney, is missing the first two matches um, is a problem. But overall, the, this is not a bad team. Is this the worst England squad? I think that's harsh, to be honest. They go into it with um, expectations very, very low. Uh, Roy Hodgson, the papers can't wait to sharpen the knives, and they wanted Harry, didn't they? Roy's a proper guy. He's assembled the best squad he could, apart from maybe Rio. Uh, that'll always be a question in people's minds. Uh, I don't think it's the worst, I don't. And I think because of the expectations, the low expectations, that England, if they get out of the group, could go to quarter-final. They might meet Spain quarter-final, Depends if they finish first or second. If they miss Spain, England could get to a semi-final, just like Chelsea done to win the Champions League. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't exciting, it wasn't fantastic, but hey, Denmark won it. Yugoslavia, if you remember, come in, last resort, and they won it. So I, I think England can go a fair way if they come out of the group. Worst squad, it's not the strongest, it's probably not the worst, probably not. No, I, I would have thought that Roy Hodgson has complete uh, freedom to choose the players he wants. It's quite clear in appointing Roy Hodgson and not going for Harry Redknapp, the FA have appointed a manager who they see as the long-term planner of English football. Remember, English football is finally following the rest of the world and getting a national football centre that's just coming into stream and they see Hodgson is very much part of those plans, you know, following the examples of France and Spain and Germany and so on. And they, there wouldn't be any interference as to who he could select and what player. No, I think the, the Terry um, Ferdinand issue is different. It's an issue of governance where the FA has shown that uh, it's still running football like a cottage industry. Roy Hodgson, this now met him just a few weeks in the West End. Uh, of London before he got the job. Pleasant man, nice man. Knew Bobby Robson, my old boss, very well. And one thing, Roy, he managed into Milan. He's, he, he was manager of two uh, countries as well before England. He's been around Europe, speaks several languages. He's a proper football man. He's not flamboyant. He's not, uh, he doesn't lose the plot. He doesn't scream, shout. I believe in the dressing room, he can tell you if you're right or wrong. I know that. So he's no mug. I think he's a proper football man. I think he's an honest man. And he will do his best. And I think the inclusion of Oxley chamberlain uh, in the first game against France proved they will not pick a side to please the English press, the British press. No one expected that. I really mean that. Not that it was Downing or they're going to play Walcott. He suddenly chucked the kid in. And that tells me he's a man that thinks, no, I know what I'm doing. I'm in control here. And I think he is in control. And I hope he has a good run here. I hope he gets a few good results in Euros. And then we'll really see the best of Roy Hodgson. He sets up well. He will, he'll be one of these managers that doesn't lose many games. His record will always be good. Is he the most exciting manager? No. Is he the worst manager? Absolutely not. He's a decent football manager. Give him the ammunition. I think you'll fire the bullets.